Welcome back to Gravity Rush. Now that we have the backstory plot out of the way, it's time to save the world again. So could you say that that backstory was a royal mess? Eh. Eh? Eh? In eh. more ways than one. Get it? Why are you the way you are? <laughs> it all started when I was seven years old. My father <laughs> came home and bad me from work that day. <laughs> Okay, so now we play as Raven in a non-DLC context where she has to hold off. She has to be Vegeta, basically. Um, okay, yeah, she she gets to be second fiddle to the hero. Um, so, okay, who's the, the yellow girl? Some random god monster that the kid unleashed. Okay. And this is the real, actual final boss? Nope. Oh, god damn it! <laughs> what was... It's more complicated than that. What was Alias, anyway? A robot. Yes, I know you... That Sid made. Uh -oh. Wait, so Sid was Alias the entire time? Yes. But Alias was trying to destroy Hexville in the first game. I don't get it either. And Sid was trying to help her stop Alias. Uh, this is probably cause... something I would understand if I had been following the story more closely. Uh, are you sure it was Sid or just something Sid made back when he was the, the royal whatever? He'll take off the mask later. Huh. So wait, so Sid isn't dead then? I don't know. All right, so apparently, after the first time where he got stabbed in the back, he died. But the he gods, was brought back. To, the gods brought him back. Yeah, he brought back to life, and then he died again, or something. What kind of cheat codes does he have? <laughs> Hold on a uh, moment. I'm looking up the wiki article. <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, Okay. Oh, also, don't look up Alias Gravity Rush, because uh, one of the first things that pops into um, Google is, Sid is Alias Gravity Rush. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, if you're, I mean, we already just told you that he was, so... Yeah, I know, <laughs> but uh, for the person who's, like, looking up, like, Alias Gravity Rush in Gravity Rush 1, just for whatever reason, they get that, like, okay... For the same reason, if you're ever playing Ghost Trick, which is an amazing game, by the way, don't ever look up the main character. Because <laughs> uh, Google autofill spoils a huge thing. Okay. Um, yeah, Alias in the first game first appears when Sid is asking Cat for help to stop Alias, Alias from stealing a thing. So, he's trying to ask Cat for help from himself? Oh my god. It's probably just a test of character. Or some other thing. Or they, just didn't, or they didn't think this through. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's, that, that, that's the easy answer. I like to think that it was probably just a, a test of character or some other shit. Maybe he was uh, priming Cat for some other thing. I don't know. You want to know what would be great? If the game alluded that that was going on instead of having us grasp at straws. Like, I mean, granted, show don't tell, but showing involves a little bit of telling. <laughs> you know what would be really great? Is if we didn't have these stories that make uh, the supposed good guys manipulating the main character sound like a good thing. Oh yeah, shit. That's a that's a good point. The only time that has ever that. worked for me has been Harry Potter, and that is entirely because the conditions for Harry Potter surviving were predicated on him thinking he was going to die. So he kind of had to. If he hadn't thought he was going to die, the magic wouldn't have worked, and that was a rule, and it made sense. So that worked. But this is this is literally like, is there a reason? What the hell? And even then, Dumbledore and Snape still come off as giant jackasses. So... Yeah. 
Oh, oh no, our friends are dead. Not so Ooh, much Dumbledore. Not lights. so much Dumbledore outside of fan fiction though. It kind of bugs. It kind of bugs me because the entire fan fiction community seems to think that his intention was the exact opposite of his stated intention at the end. <sighs> but my head interpretation of the character is more accurate than the actual interpretation of the character. Oh, that's the actual. Oh no! God no. damn it! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a matter of interpretation. This is literally spelled out in the final chapter of the book, and people just ignore it. Okay, thank you. I mean, it's. Oh hey, oh raven! <laughs> Birds will fly again. I don't know again, why. Again, they this already. Much, they but still fly. Everything that's not your friend. I don't know. Where's cat? John, birds still fly. They didn't stop flying. Well, it could land and then start to flying again. Tell us the dodo. <laughs> <laughs> that bird never... Or, or, ki or kiwi, so they don't fly. Kiwi is a fruit. What? No, the kiwi bird. Yeah, no, the, but a kiwi is a fruit. Not a bird. <laughs> okay, penguins don't fly. Yeah, Tom but Blue they're says adorable. otherwise. Ostriches. <laughs> they... Yeah. Uh, look, they, don't, they haven't realized that. Their brains are very small. Okay, we're not going to ruin their fun. Okay, here's the thing, though, okay? Evolution started with non-flying birds and worked its way up to flying. They're called dinosaurs, man. Come on, follow follow, follow along. Yeah, I, I get that, but that doesn't mean that birds stopped flying. They still fly. Hmm. I'm trying to... Although, when you think about it that way, then you realize that penguins were birds that learned how to fly and then decided... Nah, I'm good. And then went around waddling like doofuses for the rest of their lives. Well, I mean, they're more built for swimming than anything, but... Yeah, so they thought, you know, I could literally fly away from this giant, cold, miserable Arctic wasteland. Antarctic wasteland. And then they decided, nah, it's adult swim time. And then hung out in the water instead. Maybe they just really like. aren't that bright. Maybe they just really like the fish. Have you ever thought about that? You can get fish without having to live in Antarctica. Oh well, not if you want to maintain the eco balance that keeps you alive. They don't care about that. They're they're birds. They, <laughs> they eat they, whatever they want to. They they I don't tell you that the, the seagulls on the beach that steal my roast beef sandwich don't care. They're about not conscious <laughs> enough to actively care about it. But the fact that animals do go to where they're likely to have food does naturally lead to that happening. Oh, for God's sake, you evil little kid! I am going to drill kick your face in so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so. This game just did one of my least favorite things in video games. The I just beat the boss, but then I die in cutscene maneuver. Right. Which yeah. oh, she, Well, okay, well, she didn't die, but I see what you mean. Yeah, it's like, okay, in gameplay, we prove that we can defeat this character. But then we'll have another cutscene to prove that, that it, there's no... That it can't happen. I mean, if that's the case, then just make the boss fight a supposed to lose boss fight. And only have that cutscene play if you so happen to win as like a technical failsafe or whatever. One of my favorite ways that was ever handled is actually in the Wild Arms 1 remake where you don't technically beat the boss, but you do get uh, an amount of experience points at the end of the battle equal to the amount of damage you dealt. So That's actually a cool way to do it. Yeah, yeah. so the boss is a you-can't-win battle, but you have an incentive yeah. to try as hard as you can. Yeah. And I mean, supposed to lose fights can be done poorly in a number of ways, but I would rather have that than a fight where I go through it, I win, like I definitively get their health down to zero. I could be at full health, theoretically, and then the cutscene just says, nah, bro, you lost anyway. <laughs> it just irritates me yeah. when that happens. Also, it's supposed to be like triumphant. We're playing as Raven for the first time. Theoretically, I mean, because the DLC hadn't come out at this point, you said, right? Well, obviously it showed up on the menu when I started the chatter, but yeah, if you got the game right, right when it came out, the DLC wasn't out yet. Yeah, so it's like the first time you're playing as Raven, this is supposed to be really cool, all that, and then it's just like, oh, never mind, she gets her ass handed. It's just, I don't know. So she's the Vegeta, Not a fan. in other words. Yeah, but Vegeta 
Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, Vegeta doesn't ever really accomplish anything he, once he, he becomes part of the good guy. He slightly <laughs> jostles Cell so that Gohan can finish him off. Um. Like, that's it. He's either... <laughs> any other time I can think of, he either doesn't contribute anything meaningful or actively makes the situation worse. The, o the um, only times he's allowed to contribute anything somewhat meaningful are when he's fighting alongside Goku, and even those situations don't tend to go out so well. So, I guess when he and Goku are technically the same person... No, that he's... didn't work. Well, no, because Vegito and Gogeta, I don't remember which one's which. Vegito is the uh, one with the earrings and the one that actually appears in the show rather than some movie or something, I think. Okay. Um, so, yeah, like, I don't think that they even defeat... They Goku. don't. They get cocky and, and, and uh, lose. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so well, they, well, they, 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 they Well, they fake loose so they can go inside Boo to save Piccolo and the rest. Oh, so they say after. This thing's name is literally electricity. Um... What winds up happening is that, like, uh, the entire Boo saga is just a never-ending string of false stops. So, every... <laughs> because the editor and the fans kept asking for different things. Right, yeah. So, that entire well, story like, was a mess. Like, what did the fans want that okay, wasn't given Okay, so, so here's the thing. Um, obviously, they asked Toriyama to continue because it's Dragon Ball Z. It's super popular. Okay. So he made, you know, go on the protagonist as he set up at the end of Cell, as you yes. do. Which he should have done. Fan yes, but fans don't want Gohan and high school hijinks. They want high octane action with Goku and all that stuff. Okay. So they bring Goku back. So he brought Goku back for a day and started the whole Boo thing, which fine. But he didn't want Goku to be. He just didn't want Goku to be the main hero anymore. So he created the fusion thing for Trunks and Goten. Fans thought Goten and Trunks were annoying. So he gave Gohan that super special power up from the old guy. They still want Goku back. So Toriyama's like, fucking fine, Goku. <laughs> Yay, Goku! <laughs> and this is why, you know, uh, the creative direction of a series should not be dictated by its fans or its editor. <sighs> uh, I mean... Some Shonen, Shonen Trump is weird. They place a lot of value on rankings for some reason. Yeah, they have like these character ranking polls. They mention them in every Shonen Jump. Yeah, like, and they and they like have actual like series rankings where they have a card in the magazine that you mail in and you rank your favorites and anything that's too low basically gets the chopping block. Well, they air a even, lot even, of even uh, if it's even if it's like something that's filling a specific niche that the magazine otherwise doesn't have. Yeah, but. Jump also has, like, a good, like, 20-plus uh, manga yeah, it's, in its magazine, yeah, it, though, right? Yeah, it, it's a big magazine, and it's, like, 20 or so different series that get published in that magazine. Yeah, so... so my, mean, mind, mind you, that business is drastically falling because people just don't buy those anymore. Yeah, like, uh, people would rather just follow the, the, the manga Tonkamons, that they yeah. want to read as opposed to buy a manga for the three... Like buy a magazine for the three manga they read, and then not read yeah. the other. Well, they had a well 12. back in the day they had a big problem of store readers. Oh where someone, yeah, where, yeah, where someone would just pick up the magazine, read the one or two chapters of the thing they want, and then put it back on the shelf. Uh, yeah, that um, I know that uh, Western Comic Books had that problem, uh, which is why yeah. they started they, they, plastic they wrapping come, some of them. Yeah, they come in the sleeves that you can't open anymore unless you go to the checkout and buy it. Ah, uh, jeez, yeah. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, novels are long enough that they don't have to worry about that, so <laughs> Barnes & Noble just sets out a bunch of chairs so that you can sit down and read books to your, at your leisure, because they know it'll encourage you to buy it. <sighs> I mean, I've been, I've been wanting Western comics to go for, like, a... a maybe, maybe not young adult, but young adult books tend to get released more frequently... Well, so, well, they need like, to they, they need to move to just graphic novel format. Yeah, like you get the Captain you, America uh, every six months, and it's an entire like story, twelve hour yeah. arc, twelve issue ish length. Not like story. actual issue, but it's like the full story, and then they're done, and then they can like have crossovers and stuff make a little bit more sense because they can have Spider Man be in like three panels instead of having to make it like t an issue of Spider Man and an issue of Captain America. You know, so you have it, to buy both. And... Yeah, so... I mean, I've been thinking they should do that for forever, but, you know... They're not going to. Of course not. 
What they also should be doing is going to full digital releases in a subscription format. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, like subscribe to DC or Marvel Comics for like five or six bucks a month and you get every release every Wednesday, which people would read, but they don't want to do that. I get. I bet your reading would go up on stuff like Aquaman or uh, other less popular heroes. Because if they already have the app, they might as well, as well read. read it. The problem <laughs> yeah, with that exactly. is pretty much the same reason why we still have movie theaters around. Because the, the industry wants to support the Oh, uh, Jesus Christ, the camera? Camera? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I get that, Lewis, but the problem is you're not getting sales now. Well, yeah, I know. It, it's it's kind of the same reason that, that I'm like, yeah, but at the same time, we're very, very obviously moving into an era where movie theaters are becoming obsolete too, so... Eh. Um... But then again... Even as I say that, part of me still wants there to be arcades in America again, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was deserved. You know, there's something, like, really f cathartic about seeing a villain you really hate. Like, just getting slapped or punched in the face, you know? What? Like, sometimes you don't feel like you really need anything more than just to, like, see that guy get, like, smacked in the face and then just like, okay, we're good. What, what just happened? Are we going to fight another random transformation final boss? Yes. Oh. I told you that wasn't the final boss. <laughs> Great. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> we will see it in the final part of Gravity Rush, thank God.